Okay, so today I just I wanted to use my TI-84 emulator to help you with um, probability and doing some of the calculations on your calculator instead of doing them by hand. So I just want to take a couple of minutes uh, to give you the three basic functions and where to find them. All right. So the first thing that you've maybe never heard before is the factorial, and I want to give attribution to mathwords.com. And so the factorial is the product of a given integer and all the smaller positive integers. The factorial is written as n exclamation point, so it has the read aloud as n factorial. <coughs> so the idea um, is that 6 factorial, and I'm right here, that 6 factorial is 6 times 5, the smaller positive integer, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that gives you 720. Okay. Now, this is uh, nice, and when it's short like this, you could type it into your calculator, right? You could type 6 times um, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 into your calculator. But there's a couple of places where maybe you could fat finger it and maybe get the wrong answer or if say maybe you had to do the 11th factorial do you really want to go 11 times 10 times 9 I, I don't think so right so let's um, go ahead and do this right let's do the 11 let's do the 6 factorial first so the 6 and then you go to the math button all right and everything that I'm pushing is over here okay and you're gonna scroll over to the right on the d-pad to probability the PRB stands for probability okay so this is a math function under probability and I've hit the right arrow button three times that's what that means right there and you can see that function number four is the factorial so I'm gonna push function number four to get the six factorial and it is indeed 720 so now I can do the 11 factorial math over 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 number four so I can do the eleventh factorial and see that it is a rather large number <coughs> excuse me because the factorial tends to be really large you want to be very careful with this at some point your calculator will overflow alright so like if you try to put the ninety nine fact oops let's clear that out I apologize if we put the 99th factorial in right and I hit enter you get an overflow error because it's trying to multiply 99 times 98 times 97 and it just doesn't have enough memory to do that so you will have to do some simplifying to be able to to do this and so this is the factorial and this is how you do it in your calculator All right now the next one that we're going to use is the permutation and a permutation is where order matters okay so <clears throat> if you're putting things in alphabetical order you're putting things in order by size or if you're ranking things from first through tenth all of those have an order that matters and so that's a permutation and so the formula for the number of possible unique arrangements of k objects from a set of n objects so you're gonna pick k things from a set of n things and so let's think about this for a second all right um, how many ways can four students from a group of 15 be lined up for a photograph all right so you don't you can only fit four students in and so you're gonna pick from a group of 15 you have to pick your three favorite movies from all of the movies that you own those would all be uh, individual rankings and so you have <clears throat> this formula that has the factorial in it, n factorial, right, over n minus k factorial, where n is the number of things that you're picking from, and k is the number of things that you pick, all right? And it's this very complicated formula, and nobody wants to use this formula, right? So let's see. There are 15 P4 possible permutations of four students from a group of 15. Okay, and so I, I could I could do this right here, 
and get the 32,760, but there's some places for some error, right? Some math places for some error. Man, if only my calculator enabled me to do something like that. Well, if I'm going to pick 15 objects, I'm going to go back to math. I'm going to go over to probability, and you'll see that permutation, NR, is number two. So I push the number two button, and then I'm going to pick four students. The N always goes first. You have to put the number in first, then select the function, and then the number of items that you're picking. And now when I click it, I do get the 32,760 from before. All right. <coughs> Excuse me again. So this is how you can use probability. Um, let's say that you have um, the 100 top movies from uh, the American Film Society, and you want to rank your five favorite from that list, okay? And you're ranking them. First best, second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best. So that being picked third means something different than being picked first and you hit enter and there are this many ways of choosing five films to rank in order out of a hundred okay now notice how he's being very specific about the language of ranking and order being important and that's because we're going to come to the combination formula the combination formula is a formula for the possible combinations of R objects from a set of N objects. It sounds very, very similar, except that for combinations, order is irrelevant. You're just picking uh, four people. You're not rank ordering them, right? You're just picking a movie to watch, not your favorite movie to watch, okay? And so here, a combination is very very different from a permutation and <clears throat> again it has the NCR to it the number of items and the number you're picking and this formula with the factorial in it and then this kinda nice formula over here okay um, but again <clears throat> this is all just notation you're looking at this you're going oh my gosh <clears throat> how many different committees of four students can be chosen from a group of 15. Well, a committee doesn't have a rank ordering, right? Like president, vice president, secretary, that would be a permutation, right? Because the president is very different from what the secretary does, so the order who gets what position matters. If you're just picking four students for a committee, the students are all on the same committee, they all have a vote, and so the order in which you pick these students doesn't really make a difference. So this is a combination, and it's a much smaller number, okay? But the formula is much worse. So we go back to our calculator, and we go, look, I have 15 students. I'm going to go back to math. I'm going to scroll over to probability, and then you'll see number three is my combination uh, selection. So I select three, and again, the number of items has to be first, and then the mathematical function, and then the number of choices. And you hit enter, and you get the 1365, which is exactly uh, what they got from using the formula. So those are the three ways of using the calculator to do probability functions. So remember, six factorial is scroll over to probability and select number four, okay? A combination is where order doesn't matter and so if you have 15 people and you are going to select four committee members from them then you're going to get 1365 and the order doesn't matter but if you have 15 people and you're going to select a president a vice president a secretary and a treasurer that's a permutation the order definitely matters there and so now you have 32,000 different ways. The factorial grows very, very quickly. A combination is always going to be much smaller than the same permutation because the order doesn't matter. All right, this concludes the video. I hope that uh, you enjoy it.